the news is as we expected, but the language that the attorney general used certainly struck me as not particularly trying to, to strike a bipartisan uh, tone. He talked uh, about illegal aliens, which is a term uh, used more often on the right than the left, and, and said we cannot admit everyone who would like to come here. Of course, this program is about people who are already here. What, what struck you about the tone of the attorney general? How do you expect uh, CEOs who have already come out on the other side of this to respond now? You know, I, I think it is ironic that the attorney general, the administration that has done more to undermine the rule of law than I think any presidential administration before it, would be out there citing the rule of law as the argument for doing this. This thing was going through the courts. They didn't need to do anything. And I look at this and view it as either this is hostage taking in an attempt to trade this for funding for the wall or something else. Or it's just mean-spirited because you look at this from the perspective of, again, these are people who are American in all but the last legal requirement. They grew up here, they work here, they went to school here, they pay taxes. And, you know, whether it's Apple Computer or Microsoft, Google, doesn't matter, all of them have Dreamers as employees. And, it, and you know, if you know Dreamers, these are these are people who, who are the hardest working uh, most loyal people you could possibly have. The notion that we want to chase them away is just so terrible for the economy on the face of it. But what it really does is it, it undoes a promise. It's yet another thing the Trump administration is doing that I think well, Roger, makes America Roger, weaker because we don't, what's tech we don't going follow to, through on our promises. What's tech going to do about it? I mean, it's one thing to write I, a I letter. I don't know. But I mean, the, I, I don't know the answer. For the next two years, quite obviously, these companies are going to do everything in their power to protect the employees. And I think to argue for the logical answer here, which is there are 800,000 people here who are overwhelmingly uh, either in school or employed and paying taxes and who are real contributors to society. They're not taking jobs away from, quote, Americans, unquote. Our entire economy is based on having lots of different kinds of people in it. And, you know, there are some jobs that immigrants are literally the only people going to do. How are we going to repair Houston without the undocumented people who make up maybe half of the labor force and construction in Houston? Now, I think the tech CEOs are going to fight for this, and I think they're going to fight for it, one, because it's the right thing to do. And uh, secondly, you know, again, if we're trying to have a stock market, we need to have a real rule of law. We Roger, need to actually the, have contracts observed. Roger. But one of the things that Jeff Sessions did say was he talked about the huge surge of children that did come to the border under President Obama when it became clear that it was easier for children to stay. It's what led to President Obama being labeled deporter in chief by fusion yeah. because it induced so many. How do you reconcile? Well, first you of can all, put aside I, I'm the words that Jeff Sessions used that I, I know a lot of people are going to find offensive, but the idea of the rule of law, this was done by executive order because it couldn't get through Congress. How do you reconcile that? No, no, that? I, I, I think that the real issue here is let's remember the reason people were showing up on the border was because of violence taking place in Central America. You know, they weren't there because they thought they were going to be able to somehow qualify for DACA. There were Obviously, many reasons they that they. There were no, many but, reasons but let that us they be, come let to us the border. Be fair. But, let us yeah. be fair. There was a lot of violence going there on is. in Central America that is a major and driving issue. people still north. Is. And that yeah. was coincidental. That was not related. And I think it's super, super important when you're looking at these things to recognize that DACA is a separate case. And trying to conflate these things is politically convenient because people will gloss over and, and imagine it. But these it things is. are not the same thing. Dreamers are a separate set of people. They are part of our economy. And as Americans, what do we stand for? If we do not stand for our word, and Roger, you know, hold you can on. sit we there and We want to tell people what IBM just tweeted out. IBM believes that Dreamers have made a positive contribution to our company and to our economy, and we support bipartisan legislation in Congress to allow them to remain in the United States. Sarah, that's where uh, Attorney General Sessions is trying to get them to go, trying to get Congress to actually do something about it. What are that's, the chances of that? That's right. Well, they are really backed up, as you know, Michelle. And uh, there are many pressing issues uh, relative to the economy, this being one of them. And it seems unlikely that this Congress is going to be able to solve this in six months, just based on the track record that we see. But there were really two issues I, that we heard from the attorney general. One is the legal argument. And what he said legally is probably true. 
that the president acted unilaterally and it's not constitutional and Congress needs to act. But that then there is the whole human. Well, uh, well, we'll see what the courts say. Most uh, constitutional scholars think that. But correct. But, but the president but, is entitled to do executive order. But po politically speaking, this is you know this issue that you just raised from IBM. This is going to be the first of many major U.S. corporations that put out a statement like this. And politically, it is going to be another issue where the president and the administration are on the wrong side of the uh, broad public. And the, the political problems for this president keep stacking up. And I, again, I go back to what I said earlier in the program, which is the timing of this was really ill thought through. And while this is important, and perhaps he felt that he needed to act because of Republicans' attorney generals. By the way, when I was in the White House, we spoke to those folks, and we were able to coordinate issues like this. And, and had they tried, they probably could have. Um, you know, so the whole thing to me, the way that this is staged, rolled out, the timing of it, none of it makes any sense politically, policy-wise, whatsoever. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.